Welcome to part 7 in my 9 part series on learning to juggle. In the last episode, we had a look at club juggling and controlling spin while juggling a standard pattern. In this episode, we'll look at expanding that standard pattern to include other juggling tricks. There are three main categories of club juggling tricks that we'll be covering in this episode. We'll be covering spin first of all. Spin is one of the fundamental aspects of club juggling, and it might be what got you into club juggling in the first place. You can use your fingers and wrist to change the amount of spin in the club. There is no necessary relationship between height and number of spins. It is more useful when expanding your abilities to work on a double that is about twice as high as your single, and a triple that is about three times as high. Start by seeing if you can just throw high enough and with a little bit more wrist flick to give yourself a nice, even double spin. You want the spins to be consistent. When something is spun slightly too much, we call it overspun. And when it is spun slightly less, it's called underspun. Start off with one and work your way up. Then see if you can consistently throw your doubles so that every single throw will be a double spin. This will allow for all sorts of other more interesting tricks. The same can be done with triples, quadruples, or any other number of spins. Another basic for doing doubles is working on two in one hand. Two in one hand is done exactly the same way as it is with balls. Most people find that doing two in one hand in doubles is the easiest way to perform it. But that's not to say that you can't do it in singles or other spins. There are some fantastic effects that can be produced by doing two in one hand in singles. Four clubs is normally done in the double spin with two in one hand. Five clubs also normally done with double spins. For a flat, you're trying to reduce the amount of flick in your wrist. If you can release slightly up and slide back, you're going to be able to create a fairly consistent flat. Now my flats aren't perfect, but I'm able to use them for a variety of tricks. You can also try a reverse spin. Flats, doubles, and triples are all the beginning of playing with spin. Whether or not you have control of a number of spins, you can begin to move some of the tricks you know from your ball juggling into your three club juggling. Start off your three ball trick, see how the trick works, and then reintroduce it into club juggling. In most cases, there's not much more to it. That's not to say that converting ball tricks to club tricks is going to be easy. In many cases, you're going to have to think a lot more about spin and grip than you ever were with balls. One quite popular trick that is more often done with clubs than with balls is chops. Doing consistent under the arm throws back and forth while adding a chopping motion over top as the ball or club travels underneath the arm. It's often more interesting to reach right down to the handle to give yourself a nice floaty chopping motion. Any other trick you can think of with balls can be attempted with clubs, but moving those over is just the same process. Clubs have unique physics that make for unique tricks you either can't do with balls or wouldn't notice if you did. This is by far the largest category of club juggling tricks. A flourish usually moves an object in your hand without releasing it, and sometimes is simply added onto another trick. There are many standard club flourishes. The most standard is achieved by gripping between the thumb and forefinger handle up. 
you then push up with your thumb, roll the club between your fingers, and return the club to its original position. But the key is to remember that you cannot catch into this flourish with a standard grip. You actually have to catch between that thumb and forefinger out of midair. This means catching a little earlier in the spin. Here are a few other club flourishes that you might want to incorporate into your juggling. There are also many other rolls, placements, and balances that can really only be achieved with something shaped like a club. It would take a long time to teach each one of these individually, and so you may want to seek out videos to know how they're done. One other aspect that is particular to the shape of the club is the kick-up. To do a kick-up, you place a club so that the handle rests across your foot and the knob of the club just past your ankle. The club is partially hooked in over top of your foot. You should be able to lift your foot up and have the club carry up with it. When you sharply lift your leg and twist your foot slightly, the club will react against the torque of your foot, creating spin. You can use this effect to create more spins or you can actually reduce the flip with your foot to create a flatter throw. This is a great way to start juggling. One of my favorite categories of club trick doesn't necessarily involve tossing the club and can lead to numerous interesting patterns and variations. One name popularized by the Radical Club News series of videos from Peapot is the Lego. There are many different types of Legos out there and it's quite easy to come up with your own Legos with a little practice. There is a Juggling Laboratories episode all about lines and other shapes which covers some basic Legos. The key with Legos is always learning how to find a transition that creates a new shape. There are so many different ways to play with the physics and the shape of the club that we couldn't even cover the basics of them here. But I hope that by watching this video you'll pick up quite a range of tricks. In the next episode, we'll look at juggling larger numbers of balls and clubs.